Praise be Jesus and Mary. I'm David Rodriguez, content director for the Fatima Center, welcoming you to yet another episode of Our Lady Shock Troops with our host, Kevin Rorty. Welcome, Kevin. Hi, David. Thanks for having me again. Good to have you. So last time we talked about the importance of the mass in our life and our plan of life. I think today we can cover spiritual resolutions, the most important ones, because we've talked a little bit about that. So here you know, the the bedrock spiritual resolutions you've got to make, uh, but connecting us uh, back to the mass. I'd also think we should start in prayer and we can offer up a, a spiritual communion, uh, which is a, certainly a, a very good prayer to do. Uh, we'll use one that's slightly modified by St. Alphonsus Liguori. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen. My Jesus, I firmly believe that thou art present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the most blessed sacrament of the altar. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Lord, increase my faith. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. Help me love thee evermore. Since I cannot now receive thee under the sacramental veil, I beseech thee with a heart full of love and longing to come spiritually into my soul. As though thou were already there, I embrace thee, and I unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Thou in me and I in thee, in time and in eternity, in Mary, in her immaculate heart. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, Kevin, uh, if someone were to ask you, okay, I hear what you're saying. I got to make some spiritual resolutions to develop a plan of life. But, but really, where do I start? What would you tell them? Well, I'd say don't stress out about it. Uh, there's a mountain ahead of you. It's the ascent of Mount Carmel. Have humility and trust in God and be prudentially practical about how to go about it. And so I'll just give three of what I consider the most essential spiritual resolutions. There's a lot of important devotions and things like that, but if I were going to boil it down, like, you know, in, in, in business terms or in practical productivity terms, or whatever, people talk about things like the 80-20 principle. You know, what are the, the 20% of things that give 80% of the produce or fruit? Even this is a principle, even in nature, if you look at plants or whatever, like 20% bring about 80% of fruit, that kind of stuff. So um, that's kind of how I look at what I consider the essential spiritual exercises to be. So uh, those three are daily rosary, daily meditation and daily spiritual reading. Okay. And so I, I want to emphasize in this episode, why are these three the most essential? I want, I want everyone to really be convinced, hopefully by the end of this, that these are essential, each one of them. And the way that I think we can look at what is essential is by beginning with the end in mind, always begin with the end in mind, which is that eternal life with God forever in heaven and the seed of eternal life begun here below being the life of grace that we've already, you know, talked some about that interior life with God. If God dwells in my soul, I need to do everything I can to, to, to nourish that union with him. Um, St. Teresa says that interior prayer is just a conversation with a friend that we know who loves us. That's Jesus dwelling in our soul. The, the, the Trinity literally is in our soul. Three persons, the three persons of the Trinity. They dwell in our soul. So what do you do with persons? What do you do when you have a friendship? You have to commune. You have to communicate. You have to converse with one another. And so, you know, and those are all, all nice analogies, but think of it this way. What happens when you go, you're, you're around people and then you go to a room by yourself. What are the thoughts going on in your mind? What are the things you're thinking? What are the things you're willing? What are your desires? What's going on? That's, that, that's the interior life, like come forefront. That's always going on in the background of everything we're doing. But that's when it really becomes at the forefront because we're stripped of everything else. So these three activities are going to be seen in the light of wanting to improve that interior life. This is, so uh, before I dive into some of the details of each, David, um, did you want to comment on that? No, I mean, I'm, I'm right there with you right now. And uh, I think uh, diving into some of the details of those three is great. I think I'll just maybe mention a few things to help our listeners. And that will be one some of the things that's really great about these is that they're daily. 
think uh, uh, Kevin, you know, was emphasizing daily, daily, yeah. daily, because it's a spiritual resolution. So uh, we want to keep going, you know, establishing that daily relationship with God. Um, so that's why it's important. And then these are things that you really can do. Hopefully, you'll be able to see that you could do them on your own. Uh, and even, I mean, spiritual reading might be a little tough if you didn't have a book with you, um, but there are some alternatives that, especially on the meditation, because I was going to say, even if you were stuck, you know, you were, um, I don't know, you're, you go on vacation and so you're not around certain things, or for that matter, worse. I mean, you got thrown in jail, right? And now you're in a cell. Uh, you might have those, or, or, you know, worse things, right? Someone who got thrown into a, a concentration camp of yeah. some sort, right? Uh, maybe they didn't meet all the protocols of something of that sort. I mean, those things happen. And we do have to prepare ourselves. We have the great example of the saints. So yeah. these are things that if we get good at, no one can take them from us, right? They don't depend on another person. They are for you. It's part of your daily life. And um, this is the Fatima Center. Uh, and so I will just remind you that this really does connect us very well with our Blessed Mother's message. I think everyone knows that over the six times that she appeared in 1917 to the three children, the one thing that she said every single time was pray the rosary every day. Um, I do not see this as a request from the Blessed Mother, the Queen of Heaven and Earth. It, it really is a command. A command, mean, yeah. Blessed Mother is telling us, you must pray the rosary every day. And we may lose a lot of things. I mean, given some things that are happening in the church today, we could lose the mass. Um, I, I see that as a real possibility. But, I mean, you can't really lose the rosary. You, you can pray that. So pray it every day. And then obviously also connected with the first Saturday devotion, Blessed Mother insisted that one of the things she wanted us doing was she wanted us meditating. Now, we'll talk more about this with the rosary, but even the rosary is a meditative prayer. Yeah. But then specifically, she also wanted us to do this meditation. And so you can see that these things are very much tied in. Our Blessed Mother, knowing what we need, is bringing some of these things to us. So, you know, for someone who thinks that, I don't know, this is maybe not connected with the Fatima message, it really, really very much is. It is how we're going to get the graces for Russia to be consecrated. So that's also part yes. of, obviously, our big apostolate. Um, so just those things to hopefully, you know, get people even more sort of like pumped up about these three things and uh, back to you, Kevin. Yeah. And that's, that's always seen the context I think is important. If, if you haven't seen it, go back to the earlier episodes that cover more the general context of our world today, why the interior life is so critical for that war and how our growth in that interior life actually really is going to be conducive all through God's grace for the salvation of souls, that we can be instruments of that if we ourselves grow in grace. Um, so let's let's dive into this, these three resolutions and why these are so essential. Um, and we'll have other episodes after this that cover the, the hows, so to speak, of each more in detail. Um, but I want to try to leave this more at the level of, okay, I really want to do this and I see how it connects to the other things and, and I'm going to do it. Okay. And I don't, I may not know exactly how, but I'm, I'm going to do it. So um, meditation, why does that tie in with this overall picture of the interior life? Well, meditation is supposed to be really a concentrated effort of conversing with Christ, that we think about certain truths that lead our will to make acts of faith, hope, and love or charity with Christ who is in our soul. Um, and and that, the, that then is conducive to that conversation with him. So if we're talking like it's it's sort of the well I'll just quote um, from Blessed Mary Eugene he's a Carmelite in the uh, early to mid 20th century he said mental prayer the door of the castle and the way of perfection is less a particular exercise than the very practice of the spiritual life being one with it regulating and encompassing all the other elements mortifications readings works of charity okay so he's basically saying that. This, this activity of mental prayer is, is really almost just, it captures sort of what the essence of the spiritual life is. And we're, I'm using meditation and mental prayer synonymously here, okay? Uh, in, this, in the sense that this is that conversation with God, that it's whatever, any activity where you're trying to just commune with the Trinity in your soul, with Christ in your soul, that is meditation, Okay, so it's sort of the heart of all of that. Now, the goal is that if you can develop this particular practice, hopefully all of your other devotions become forms of that they have maybe the external vocal part, but also they have that interior part, you know, and may, you probably do some, uh, hopefully some form of meditation when you go to mass or during the rosary, you should, but often it's sort of like, 
you know, I, I, I played basketball, you know, David, you, we played basketball before together. And, um, you know, and, and that's like a, one of my favorite pastimes and recreations. And I notice a real difference between when I've taken time to practice my form and shot, you know, just shooting on my own, then, and then I go into the game and I, I'm, 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 it's sort of more routine. It's more automatic. I've developed those habits, you know, that it, it, I'm ready for the actual game. Whereas if I go into a game and I haven't been practicing my form, my shot, say for months, sometimes that happens, you know, and I go in and it's like air ball, you know? <laughs> uh, and so we've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was a swoosh. You just hit the net. You, uh, you, you something's wrong with your eyes. <laughs> um, no, you know, I, uh, so I, I think that's somewhat parallel to if I'm setting aside particular time just for shooting or just for meditation, then my other works of devotion, my rosary, you know, other prayers throughout the day, presence of God, going to mass, reception of Holy Communion, all these things, they take on that more interior spirit. Um, and so that's why I'd say this is such, a, it's such an essential activity for all of the rest. Not to mention, St. Alfonso says that mental prayer is morally necessary for salvation, and all saints were made such by mental prayer. Uh, and St. Teresa of Avila says the devil knows he's lost his soul who perseveringly practices mental prayer. Um, and she says also that you do not, a soul does not need the devil to take him to hell if he doesn't practice mental prayer. He will go there with his own two feet. Um, so those are two, you know, doctors of the faith that are saying, hey, this is, this is essential. Yeah, no, and I mean, just a couple of tidbits that I would give people, uh, hopefully practical advice. I do think in my own experience and talking to people, when you bring up the word mental prayer, the phrase um, kind of is intimidating. Yeah. For some reason, we as Catholics are not being taught this when we're young, but even little children can do it. Uh, so just a few things I would say, and that would be one, uh, yes, there are methods to follow if you want, and you can learn certain methods, different saints like St. Ignatius of Loyola and St. Teresa of Avila have certain methods it kind of give you a step-by-step, -step, four parts, introduction, conclusion, you know, what you can consideration. And there are even some meditations that are written out. So, you know, if that helps you, you know, you can start there. You can start with some of those things. I will say one thing that really helped me was some years back, I asked Father uh, Michael Rodriguez, my brother, to give us a talk on mental prayer, and he did. And so we recorded his talks. It was a five CD set. I've listened to it six or seven times, like listening to it again and again. It, it kind of gets me back to how to do some mental prayer. So that's available through the St. Vincent Ferrer Foundation. We can link that in the bottom. But if you want to listen to this priest talk and pretty practical, he gives you practical stuff. He walks you through some, so that can help. I've actually had some of my children, younger children in their teens, listen to it. And that's helped them kind of get going with mental prayer. Uh, but the other thing is, I would say, don't get discouraged by distractions. That is inevitable. It's always going to happen. And I think the only, the key thing is that when you realize you're being distracted, kind of when you're, oh, wait a second, I'm thinking about something else completely different than my prayer, right? I'm thinking about, you know, work or basketball or my friends or whatever it is, you know, chores I've got to do. Well, you just kind of put that aside. You say, okay, Lord, I was thinking about this. I'm moving it aside now, um, giving it to you. I like to do this. I'm giving this to you. I'm putting it, you know, you are the king of my life. So I'm handing this over to you. Now I'm going to refocus on what it was that I wanted to be doing my mental prayer about, what it was that I was contemplating or considering. Um, and then that, then you make that part of your prayer. So don't let that um, discourage you to get distracted. I mean, even if you have 50 distractions, but you keep turning them over to God, right? It is becoming a mental prayer, right? And God values that. He will respond again. Like we said last time, God's never out of generosity. So he'll be generous with you if you're giving him that time. And that's really, I guess, the third thing. I mean, I think it's so important, especially, you know, probably for everyone, but definitely when you're starting, um, don't be afraid to like use a timer, you know, make this commitment. Tell God, oh, for sure. I'm going to meditate for 10 minutes or for 15 minutes. And then you you don't leave from there for the 15 minutes. It's so easy at one point in time to like realize you're being distracted or, or something grabs your attention. Oh, I got to go now. Okay. You're like, okay, in the name of the Father, Son, I'm done. And you take off. Well, that's going to break it. And that's not going to be as effective. So, you know, again, God's going to reward you for that commitment, that love you have and you show. And so sometimes we think it's so, I don't know, um, it's, it's so fabricated or constructed to say, I'm going to do this for 10 or 15 minutes, but, but with God, it isn't. He wants you to develop this. So feel free to set your timer, say you're going to do this for 10 or 15 minutes, whatever it might be. You're obviously going to have to pick a time of the day and a place where uh, you'll be able to do those, right? So for me, I wake up 
early in my house before really anyone else gets up. And I kind of know if I don't get that mental prayer done before people start waking up, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I, I might not be getting it done. Yeah. So that's a big problem, right? But if I can do it when the house is quiet and then you go to the same place because your mind will get used to it. Your mind will get used to the fact that um, just like, I don't know if you, if people sort of sit down in front of their favorite, the place that they always eat. I mean, your, your mind is sort of ready to eat, but if you have a certain place, a prayer corner, a chair you sit in with a crucifix, uh, yeah. an image, whatever it is, but if you kind of go back to that same place every day, every time, then it's going to be a lot easier and less distracting because you're going to develop the routine. So you really just got to commit to it, make the thing, get, put your 15 minute timer on, spend some time with God talking. If you want to follow those routines, follow those routines. Uh, if not, you can also, you know, think, I mean, you can consider anything. You're talking with God. It is supposed to be your own personal intimate conversation with our Lord. Um, but do it, do it, do it regularly. And I think you'll see a lot of uh, fruit in your life. It'll become easier. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to uh, keep moving forward uh, now with the rosary. Why is this so essential? I mean, there's a lot of resources with the Fatima Center on the rosary. So I, uh, you know, I'm, not, I'm, only, I'm just going to touch on this and try to tie it, especially from the interior life perspective here. So um, let's think about the interior life as sort of the summation of our Lord's life, death and resurrection in a certain way that we get to partake in his the totality of his life. The rosary with the 150 Hail Marys, the 15 original mysteries of the joyful, the sorrowful, and the glorious, they cover the life, death, and resurrection, the work of salvation of our Lord. And not only that, but the rosary with the Hail Marys in particular go through our lady. And if we're talking about overall conquering for Christ the King through grace and the salvation of souls, it's critical we see Mary as that, that link in there. It all goes through her intercession. And so our interior life shouldn't, it isn't um, an Eastern Buddhist thing that's sort of this vague idea that's like this vast darkness of nothingness. We, we, are, we are incarnate and Mary is sort of the epitome of that in a way, obviously outside of our Lord's actual incarnation, but as far as an actual creature, our lady, she was created. Um, and yet she's full of grace. And so this work of salvation goes through her. And so our interior life, that orientation toward eternal salvation for ourselves and for others goes through her as well. So the rosary really keeps that is that link to keep us grounded in that reality. Um, and th that, that aside, I would say start if you don't have any of these resolutions, start with the daily rosary. Don't try to do all of them at once start with the daily habit of the rosary. I would say that that's more essential. If you get that, then add meditation on top of that and so on. No, that's beautiful. Uh, for us to always remember that through the rosary, we are following Christ's path along his life, death, and resurrection. As St. Paul just sort of describes the gospel that way in his epistles. Um, and that's you know what you want to be meditating on too, so that you can conform your life to his conform everything you're doing to his life, death, and resurrection. That, that's the essence of why he became incarnate and why he came. And as we pray the rosary, I would just say, do your best to meditate on those mysteries of the life of our Lord and our lady, right? The virtues of the rosary is so beautiful. If you haven't read it, and again, one of the best resources I could recommend is St. Louis de Montfort's Secret of the Rosary. It is a fantastic book. should be read over and over and over again to sort of recharge yourself. Yeah, but in the that. very, yeah, at the very beginning, he introduces it by saying, look, the rosary is this meditative prayer uh, but it combines the physical aspect of actually holding those beads and going through. So your so your body is certainly involved, and then you are using your your vocal your words, right? So you're saying the words with your mouth, and then your mind is thinking about the virtues of our Lord and Our Lady, mysteries of their life. So uh, that's in, that's inexhaustible. And uh, yes, the Rosary every single day. So that's our second one. We've got doing some meditation, the rosary. And if we don't have any of these, start with the rosary. So that's a very helpful tip. Thank you, Kevin. And then what's uh, what's the third? Spiritual reading. So how does spiritual reading tie in with the spiritual life? Uh, well, spiritual reading, I would distinguish it from meditation insofar as spiritual reading is more about having axioms to live by or principles, certain guidelines that give you more practical guidance on how to live your life, a fuller vision of your life. Whereas meditation, Often, and I would encourage it to be more about 
thinking about our Lord, thinking about the mysteries, thinking about the Holy Trinity and being with him, not as much of a practical aim, where spiritual reading often, maybe you're reading a life of a saint or a book written by a saint. I recommend books whose author's first name begins with ST. Those are uh, always, you know, go-tos. Um, some modern stuff, you know, some good stuff, some not, um, that a lot, not. So, um, you know, it, it's always a safe bet to go with a book. Uh, Tried and true. It. Right. Exactly. So, um, why, why, what do I mean by this axiom? Well, think of it like you're, you, we, as human beings were socialized by our environment. So who are the 10 or five people who you spend the most amount of time with? Those are the people that often end up influencing you the most. So you should want to endeavor to have saints be the people that are you spend the most amount of time with, you know, in the sense that, okay, you're reading a book and you're allowing them to socialize you in a way. And there, there's a spiritual author who said that in our times, especially all the more necessary is spiritual reading because of the dangers of our modern world, of all of the ills and, and the evil socialization that happens in a time of Christendom we may have had some of these things a little more organic. I mean, you'd go like, instead of, you know, going out on a Tuesday or Thursday night to get drinks, you know, people are going to listen to a sermon, you know, like uh, at least that's, that's sort of the idea we have in our head. We don't have anything like that really today, you know, at least I don't. Um, so we have to be conscientious about how are we allowing ourselves to be formed and how we should live. So when you read the life of a saint, you're like, wow, someone actually lived this way. They lived, this is how the interior life manifests itself in all the different facets of my life. And if you don't do this, oftentimes you're not going to be as well disposed in your spirit for meditation, or at least sooner or later, it may die out. This is sort of the, the heat for the furnace, so to speak, to, to prime you for, um, to, to be properly disposed throughout all of your conduct for that intimate time in meditation with our Lord. Um, it's because meditation, it's, it's, it's valuable in itself, but also in the sense that it opens your eyes to everything else in your life because you start seeing like, well, I, I am now, it's more, more clear to me, this attachment, that attachment, I need to grow in courage here or temperance here. And spiritual reading puts those principles in our mind of, of okay, I need to unroot these things because I've been inspired by this ideal or I've seen the disgust for this sin or I've seen the horror and I fear the punishment for continuing in, in my route in this way or whatever. That's what spiritual reading does. It sort of inspires us and guides us in, in those more practical matters of how we live our life. And the interior life, you know, as we've said, it's, it's, it's living it out in our totality of everything we do throughout our day. So um, spiritual reading is really essential to, to making that happen. Well, that's great. No, and those are three, I think, fundamental things that we, we can all be working on. Any suggestions on, I mean, is it you try to do 10 or 15 minutes of spiritual reading a day or any thoughts on that? Because we did say, yep. I mean, for especially for beginners, 10 minutes, 15 minutes of meditation is great. The rosary might take 15 minutes as well. Yeah. Uh, spiritual reading. 10, 10, 15 minutes, a good place to start. Yeah. And so, I mean, just one thing that you might consider is, is you know, work it however it works for you, but maybe the mental prayer in the morning Maybe you're getting your rosary done anytime during the day or in the evening, and maybe before you're going to bed, you do some spiritual reading. Uh, one way that can help is if you go to sleep with that, then your mind, your subconscious mind yeah. might even be thinking about the things you read about. And then, yes, when you wake up in the morning, you might have some extra fuel there for your meditation from, totally. you know, from what you read the, the night before. Um, totally. Yeah. Well, yeah, these are, these are the three, I would say are, are essentials. Um, and they're essential in the, in the sense that they really fuel. There's a lot of other devotions, you know, but these, these are, these really penetrate deep in our soul. Um, and you'll see the fruits over time. You know, you're, you might hit a high in the beginning. You might just be steady. It might be like, I'm just really dry. Um, but I just know so many people, they start doing this three, six, 12 months later, they look back and they're like, I can't point to a particular moment necessarily, but my life is so much different since I started doing that. I just see every, I can't imagine life without these exercises. Now I, my whole lens for living has changed. Um, and it's, it's truly beautiful. Like we don't realize the opportunity that our Lord puts before us to live this, this almost this mystic. It's not almost, it is a mystical way. It's seeing from the perspective of the Holy ghost who's operating in, in, in his providence and everything in every little aspect of our life. He says our, the numbers of our hair are, are number the number our, our hair is numbered right uh and so he god is working everywhere and it, you start to take on that lens more and more and so why not 
start to practice these most essential exercises, if this is the one thing necessary, and if this is the most important thing, then certainly we can make some time for this. Yep. And um, I mean, it goes without saying, but since we didn't mention it, I just want to make sure we do so that you know, we get called to task. Obviously, the sacred scriptures are excellent for, for both sure. of these yeah. things. I mean, you know, you At can both, do spiritual yeah. reading. Definitely, if you uh, haven't read the gospel, it's always good to be reading from the gospels. That can form part of your spiritual reading and for meditation as well. Although for meditation, sometimes it's, it's better to just take little bits of scripture and then really sort of chew on them and, and talk to our Lord about them. Uh, but obviously, you know, bring in, bring in the sacred scriptures, the word of God is important and we need to be nourished by that on a daily and regular basis. Yeah. Totally. Yep. I, that's a I, scriptures go to for meditation. Um, but it's certainly good for spiritual reading. I mean, yeah. Yep. Definitely written by a lot of those STs, those saints. That's uh, okay. Right. Well, thank you again for joining us. I uh, hope you can make it for our next episode as well where we'll be talking about what, what's up our next topic, Kevin, you know, already. We're going to dive into the specifics of meditation. You already covered some of that, but we got a lot more that we'll cover to give practical tips and all. Well, that's great. That's a good, like uh, over 10, so. yeah, yeah. teaser to get people excited about it. We'll close with a Hail Mary. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris, Tu, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostrae. Amen. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Amen.